Animated sun rises in yellow sky over orange mountain range, revealing blue fish and duck, resolves into U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Shield. Photo montage of forest elephants in the wild and carved ivory on a conveyor. Michael Balinga. Traffickers did not see wildlife crime as high risk, but they saw it as very profitable within West Africa. Nesta Waliwa, Director of Wildlife and Protected Areas, Central African Republic, Class of 2223. English dub over French speech. They kill, for example, elephants, hippopotamuses, to go sell them. And with this money, they buy weapons, which are once again used in armed conflict or to kill animals. Photo montage of hippopotamus in grassland and close-ups of pangolins. Martha Williams, Director, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We know that trade can really impact um, certain vulnerable species to the point of uh, near extinction. Over film of elephants at a waterhole and photographs of grey parrots in flight. Michael Balinga, Combating Wildlife Trafficking Lead, West African Biodiversity and Low Emissions Development. We have iconic species like the African elephants, like the African grey parrot or the Timni parrot in West Africa, now the pangolins, but also the chimpanzees, the cross river gorilla. I can name other ones, but these species are suffering from the fact that there is no coordination in the efforts to protect them from the illegal international trade. Over brightly colored birds caged in chicken wire, David Mahabir, Assistant Conservator of Forests, Trinidad and Tobago, class of 2018 to 2019. On a yearly average, over 200,000 birds are shipped into Trinidad. Sometimes up to 95% of those birds die in shipment and after when it enters the country. Parrots crammed into small cages. Leticia Atsumpari Ngakabi, Head of Litigation and PR, Agency for Wildlife and Protected Areas, the Republic of the Congo, class of 2022 to 23. Her words are subtitled. So we have several species of fauna, but they are threatened by poaching. And poaching today is not just a threat to wildlife, but also weighs on food security, on the security of states. A red and black map with white lines tracing routes between continents. Michael Balinga. The borders are porous. The criminals can move freely. Wildlife crime is transnational organized crime. The criminals are coordinated. They are talking to each other. They are developing new technology, new techniques for getting past the, the, the customs and, and wildlife agents. So no one country can deal with this on its own. Young elephants play at the water's edge. Golden light seeps through the grasses behind them. A lioness paces across a verdant landscape. Caption, regulating legal trade and combating the threat of illegal trade requires an interdisciplinary and regional approach. In a cavernous conference hall, hundreds of chairs stand in rows, facing a screen on which a tree frog and jaguar are projected. Delegates sit with laptops and headsets for translation. Caption, CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, is an international agreement between governments to ensure that international trade in wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. As of 2023, 34,310 plant species and 6,610 animal species are listed in the appendices of the convention. The screen on the front stage reads, 19th meeting of the Conference of the Parties, 14 to 25 November, 2022, Panama City, Panama. Caption, there are 184 parties that are signatories to CITES and they meet every two years at the meeting of the Conference of the Parties to CITES. Dara Satterfield, CITES Policy Specialist, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. As she speaks, we are presented with images of delegates at the conference from the Philippines, Mali, Indonesia, China, and Bahrain. We need the capacity globally to be able to implement CITES. And to do that well, we need conservation leaders that are just as globally distributed as the species that we're trying to protect. There's 38,000 species listed under CITES from all over the world. And so we need conservation leaders and scholars from every corner of the planet to protect species. Yula Kapatanakos, International Program Specialist, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. As she references the agencies connected with CITES, 
Their logos flash up on screen. Unsustainable and illegal trade can't be addressed at an international scale if countries do not have the technical know-how to use the mechanisms created through CITES to regulate their trade. One way U.S. government agencies support CITES globally is by providing these scholarships for people working on CITES issues in countries that are most vulnerable to illegal wildlife trade. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Department of the Interior's International Technical Assistance Program, and the U.S. Agency for International Development West Africa Program, we're all working very closely together in offering these comprehensive scholarships for a really unique master's program that's called the Management and Conservation of Species in Trade, the International Framework. Um, we more informally call it the CITES master's course. The curriculum specifically focuses on the scientific and the technical processes that basically are the foundation for the implementation of CITES. And really, it's the only program of its kind. Over images of both lecturers and students in attendance at the course, Subtitled, I am Margarita Africa Clemente Muñoz from Spain, director CITES master's course, which started in 1998. And well, we have had 14 editions, receiving 390 students from 106 countries. Fundamentally, this master's degree is a training program in the convention in the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora that may be threatened precisely because of the abuse of that international trade. Yula Kapitanakos, over images of Dr. Clemente speaking with students, arrival of students at a Spanish airport, and photographs of students conducting field research across a variety of countries and terrains. Dr. Clemente has dedicated the last two decades of her life to developing a graduate level program that would help people working on wildlife trade issues to have the tools, the language, the expertise to participate in the deliberations and the decision-making processes for CITES. Its curriculum is basically broken down into two uh, main components. One is three months of intensive coursework at the International University of Andalusia's campus. And so all the students travel to Spain and they take classes together on biodiversity and the other scientific foundations of CITES while also learning about the intricacies of how CITES is administered. After the three months in Spain, the scholars travel back to their countries to begin the second phase of their training, which includes nine months of field research where they focus on CITES issues that are relevant to their country's needs. Ramla Talib is first shown on a beach, a calm sea in the background holding a pair of sea cucumbers, then presenting her findings to a class. She speaks into a microphone, and specimen photographs are projected on screen. The topic is introduction of sea cucumber cites species listed in Appendix 2 for trade in Zanzibar, Tanzania. Margarita Africa Clemente Munoz, subtitled. The thesis work is very important because many of the thesis projects have come with the hope of solving problems faced by countries, their own countries, within the convention. For example, there have been theses of all kinds, theses that have led to legislative reforms in students' own countries to improve CITES enforcement in these countries. Mercedes Valdez, Forrester, Belize Forest Department class of 2018 to 19. As she speaks, images of felled trees, new growth and wood samples are shown, as well as Mercedes leading an outdoor workshop with a group of children in brightly colored matching t-shirts. So this program has vastly changed my ability to make an impact in Belize in scientist implementation. My thesis topic was assessing the regeneration by coppicing of Dalbergia stevensoni in southern Belize. We barely have any scientific information about this rosewood species. So my thesis actually provided the much needed baseline information for the forest department. I can provide advice to the management authority. I can, I'm confident that I can provide trainings to enforcement. I can do public awareness. So I am really confident in that. We have been providing some outreach to universities and high school on CITES management. 
Adeline Ngwa, class of 2022 to 23. She speaks over botanical illustrations of a yellow flowering tree, African rosewood. My name is Adeline Ngwa, and I'm a teacher. But I work in the north region of Cameroon in the Garua Wildlife College. My thesis topic is about the management constraints and the perspective for sustainable use of Therocarpus erinaceus in Cameroon. Therocarpus erinaceus is a plant species. In English, it is called rosewood, African rosewood. It has not only the use, not only the wood that is used, but also the back of the tree that is used for medicinal purposes. I'm going to impact this knowledge to my colleagues so that when they will go back to the field, they will know the species that are on the site, that are registered in CITES, and they will know how to manage CITES species. Maha Ngali, Deputy Director of Wildlife Development and Exploitation, Cameroon, class of 2022 to 23. As she speaks, photographs show her attending the conference and in a green uniform, consulting with colleagues in the field. Subtitled, I am a water and forest engineer. I work for the Ministry of Forests and Wildlife in Cameroon. During the master's course, we were taught how to analyze proposed amendments, how to know which amendment will be validated or not. So that was what I was able to use to come here. All the members of the delegation were able to have my opinion on the various proposed amendments. And that's my little point of pride in having been able to say with concrete facts why we should or should not support a proposed amendment. Already, before leaving the country, I had the task of studying all the amendment proposals to the annexes, which I did not know how to do before. I did it in a way that, well, I didn't yet know the right process. Yula Kapetanakos, over images of conference delegates chatting and taking group photographs. One of the reasons our scholarships are so important is that we help make the CITES master's course more accessible. We cover costs like tuition and travel and research. We help arrange travel logistics. We offer leadership, team building, and mentorship opportunities. And we also give the scholars a chance to go to the CITES Conference of the Parties, where they can see everything they've learned being put into practice. One of the most powerful outcomes of the CITES master's course, and we see it time and time again, are these really strong professional and personal bonds that the scholars form with one another. These relationships that they form while they're students pave the way for a global network that lasts long after they get their degree. Carlos Maria Orego Vasquez, CITES Management Authority, Costa Rica, class of 2018 to 90, subtitled. It will always be necessary to work with allied actors, public, private, academia, all of us in the region sharing migratory resources for flora and fauna, where many of the threats that species face are shared across the entire region. So in addition to having collaborations at the national level, we also need cross-border alliances that can guarantee connectivity, that can continue to guarantee that resources are available and make use of them sustainably. The Costa Rican delegates' table, a stuffed toy jaguar perched on the front. Michael Balinga. Today we see the products of this partnership sitting in a broad number of country delegations at the CITES COP. We see them training other people in various forestry schools, police academies in their countries. We have seen them contribute and lead the process for drafting a West Africa strategy for combating wildlife crime. These people are leaders in their own right today. Nestor Waliwa, subtitled. We hope that this training will continue to train a majority of people in CITES in Africa. And we're going to accept the challenge of illegal trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora threatened by extinction. M. Serge Mibambani Ndimba, Director of Wildlife Management and Hunting, Gabon, Class of 2022 to 23. Subtitled, having certainly understood that Africa must be supported on the implementation of CITES, 
Having understood that the best way to support us is to train us, it's to give us the material so that we better understand what we have to do. Because if we don't better understand the work we have to do, we won't do it well. Yula Kapitanakos. Fortunately, there are still a number of countries that have not been able to take advantage of the opportunities offered through this graduate program. Anne St. John, biologist, CITES Management Authority, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The parties that are often not in compliance are those that, that are the most under-resourced, and I think it's incumbent upon parties that do have the resources and do have the capacity to support and, and provide assistance um, that we do so. Flags wave gently outside the Panama conference. Richard Muvunyi, head of the Veterinary Unit, Rwanda CITES Authority, class of 2022 to 23. The CITES Master's program needs to be expanded to many other people, uh, many other states. For example, um, I am the only one in Rwanda. I would like to have many more people from Rwanda going through uh, this program, as well as other countries. If all countries can have many people that uh, uh, go through this program, it can be a game changer for CITES and how we implement CITES into our countries. A pair of lionesses stalk across a plain, the silhouettes of deer watching them warily from a distance. Michael Balinga. Some issues are not issues that are national in scope. We are talking about shared resources. The lion population that we have in the north of Togo is the same population that moves across the borders into Benin, Niger, and Burkina Faso. It just stands to reason that animals know no borders, and so our efforts should not be constrained by borders. Credits 